manual small incision cataract surgery a slow demonstration hi this video is intended for surgeons in training and education purposes and viewer discretion is strongly advised so hi this is dr prashant shukla and i have come up with a new case in which i have purposely demonstrated the steps very slowly for young surgeons to understand manual small incision cataract surgery and this is how they can uh, perform their first msics so let's begin by this time uh, two side ports have been made and now is the time to stain the anterior lens capsule using trip and blue dye this is a 65 years old female patient with diabetic gummy cataract and she is also obese and one can see the head movement with every breath so this is a also important video to learn how to deal with such kind of patients the patient has been blocked with peribulbar anesthesia and the trapan blue dye has been washed out using bss and and enter chamber is now been filled with 2% hpmc some hpmc mc has been just layered over the cornea to to aid in visualization this is how you can take a bendel cystitome to raise a, a small flap puncturing right in the center of the anterior lens capsule and then you can raise a flap a c flap or whatever flap you like and the flap can be just moved over the nucleus gradually and slowly in a continuous curvilinear fashion Here I am taking a micro rexis forceps because the rexis was not moving as per my uh, liking with the cystitome. So using a micro rexis forceps, still the main uh, wound incision has not been made. The pupil is dilated to about eight millimeters, seven point five to eight millimeters, and I am aiming. to have a rexis of about 5.5 to 6 mm this is a diabetic gummy cataract and i have purposely avoided doing a phaco surgery as i had operated the other eye with mss msics and the patient is very very satisfied so now instilling some more viscoelastic into the anterior chamber the, the steps have been purposely slowed down for better understanding the capsular flap is again uh, held with a rexis forceps and the flap is just guided along the margin of the dilated pupil to have a continuous curv curvilinear capsular rexis of sufficient size by this time the rexis has been done and i am ready to make the conjunctival peritomy the bleeders are now been taken care of uh, using a wet field bipolar cautery so just mild cautery is done because we don't want to char the sclera too much 
now it's a time to make the incision and i am planning to make a almost straight incision not a frown one that is personal choice i prefer doing frown incision also crescent blade is then taken and the ends of the incision wound are marked the wound depth is around half to 1/3 and you can judge it just you can see the crescent blade through the tunnel and that symbolizes that we are in the correct depth so scleral pockets are made on the left side the bevel is slightly turned upwards and now on the uh, right side it's always good idea to hold the globe at the limbus so that i doesn't move while the scleral tunnel is been created after creating the scleral tunnel and with appropriate size now is the time to open the tunnel using a cris a uh, keratome 2.8 bevel up blade the anterior most end of the tunnel is marked and then the keratome enters into the anterior chamber then the wound extended both sides you always cut while moving forwards so that we have an internal opening which is almost parallel to the limbus after this time to do some hydro dissection just to remove the cortico capsule additions the 27 gauge cannula is just slid under the anterior anterior capsular margin the anterior capsular margin is slightly lifted up and small amount of small bolus of fluid is just injected nucleus is tapped so that's to release the any entrapped fluid which is posterior to the nucleus some viscoelastic is instilled and now i'm going to use a sinski hook to just see the mobility of the nucleus once the mobility of the nucleus is confirmed this means that we have got a very good hydro dissection and all the cortical capsular additions have been removed now is the time to remove the nucleus here we can use a biomanual technique it is a very good technique the left sinski just slides the nucleus on the left side the right one hooks the equator of the nucleus and with the help of both the instruments the nucleus would be just dialed out the chamber became shallow so i thought of uh, instilling injecting some more of viscoelastic hpmc 2% so as to have some space with proper movement of the instruments the side port one can also move the nucleus then almost the whole nucleus is in the, into the entry chamber again confirming with the two small sinski hooks once the nucleus is into entry chamber now we are going to remove it using a fecal sandwich technique viscoelastic is instilled both behind and in, and in front of the uh, nucleus we want to protect both the cornea as well as the uh, posterior capsule the sinski goes in first over the nucleus to maximum end and the vectus goes underneath the nucleus is sandwiched out and removed from the eye well in majority of the cases the loose cortical matter can be just removed using the irrigating jet of biomanual irrigation hand piece or simco can be used to just irrigate out all the loose epinucleus as well as cortex many of the cases the pupil comes down so you can do some viscomidriasis just as i have done and one can use simco or biomanual irrigation aspiration that is personal preference using biomanual is a good idea because the chamber doesn't collapse uh, simco if you use through the main incision then chamber collapses and you have to come out again and again 
instill more viscoelastic to form the chamber or one can make a bigger side port so that a 23 gauge uh, simco can just go inside the entry chamber and remove all the cortex from the side port here i am using bimanual irrigation aspiration with vacuum of about 350 to remove out all the cortical matter which is there in the capsular bag this uh, this one was a diabetic gummy cataract and the cortex is also very sticky so it's taking some time to remove it here i'm remo- removing the subincisional cortex now Well, hands are switched now and we are towards the end of the cortex removal this video has been edited and only the important aspects have been played in the film I purposely um, uploaded this film because I had issues with dialing of the intraocular lens also in this case. So now the cortex has been removed and the entry chamber would be just filled with 2% HPMC. The capsular bag will be just in, uh, filled with HPMC to make some space for intraocular lens implantation. things are going really slow and i'm taking a three piece hydrophobic uh, intraocular lens leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and in this case i had issues dialing the trailing haptic into the capsular bag just in a moment we'll see i'm using a, a sinski some viscoelastic goes in the eye here i'm using a sinski now to just um, grab the optic haptic junction but the haptic doesn't get dialed into the bag and stays over the iris so now i am planning to just hold the haptic and just uh, use a technique which is called bending the haptic so i am planning to just bend the haptic and put it into the capsule bag here it goes and in this moment i did an inadvertent aerodialysis or a small peripheral idectomy and there is a bleeding one can see at around say 5 o'clock so i'm using the irrigating jet and one can see the blood gushing out through the inadvertent aerodialysis i'm lucky to not have a lot of blood into the entire chamber and and i'm going to just remove the viscoelastic using the irrigating jet behind the intraocular lens and in front so i'm going to instill some air into the entry chamber so as to pressurize it and hopefully the bleeding would stop so by this time the case has been done i'm just hydrating the side ports some blood is over the iris which is going to just uh, dissolve on its own in subsequent days the other side port is now been hydrated here also i am going to put one teno nylon suture so as to counteract the against the elastic matism which was have which was have, have been caused by this straight long incision one suture has been put ends would be just cut in a moment and that's it well the case is done the canyata would be just closed with the cautery hope do you like the video and i hope it's going to help you in your learning career do like share subscribe this video
and keep following for more interesting videos in subsequent days thank you so much hope this would help you if you have any question queries just do uh, comment in the comment box that would encourage me to come up with more interesting cases and keep following the channel help this channel to grow thank you so much